Shalom Yashvala. Shalom Israel. This is the brother Nathamanat coming at you with another lesson. Bow willing. I don't want to eye to the Holy Spirit. It'll be edifying and comforting to the hopeful elect of Israel. All right, first and foremost, I want to start this lesson off by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh Baha Sham. Yahweh Shai Baha Sham. Rakah Kodash. Okay, Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Paleo Hebrew tongue. Yahweh Shai being the true name of the only begotten Son in the Paleo Hebrew tongue. I want to give double honors to the head apostles, elders, bishops, teachers, a great millstone who rule well and teach well across the four winds with sound doctrine. To the brothers, the Akim, who are under the umbrella, Shalom, peace be unto you and your households. All right, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, the house of David. All right, to the 12 tribes, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Haitians, West Indians, Israelite foreigners that are scattered abroad, okay, across four winds, Shalom. Peace be unto you and your households. May you seek repentance and salvation in these latter days. And that's exactly what we're coming into. Approaching Jacob's trouble. Perilous times. The beginning of sorrows, as the scriptures say. But we have a comforter. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, okay? In this word. As the scriptures say, I will not leave you comfortless. So this word, this doctrine, okay, that's been given to us. It's being taught in 100% truth and sincerity. And you have a shy. Which means he is salvation, okay? He delivers, the deliverer, okay? That is our, our comfort. We have we have faith and belief and trust in the everlasting immortality that will be given, granted to the hopeful elect, to those, you know, that are uh, of the tabernacle of David, okay? The house of David. So we pray on that salvation in his latter days, okay? You know, Abba Shem Yahweh Shai, those are the only names to pray to for salvation. Well, without further ado, I want to dive into the scriptures now, all right? Because in these latter times, you know, the anti, uh, anti Hamashiach, you know, the, the anti Yahawashai spirit, man, and, and all the scoffers, scorners, uh, false doctrines, so on and so forth. There's a lot of camps and teachers who, and, and, and two thirds of our people, you know, a lot of people that don't believe that they have to go through the, the chief cornerstone man the, the only begotten son to get to the heavenly father okay and that's simply not the case so i want to get into a little bit of scripture here okay so this is going to be the book of numbers start off in the 24th chapter and at verse 15 numbers 24 and 15 reads and he took up his parable and said balaam the son of baor hath said and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of Yahweh. Okay, so it's receiving a vision, okay, and, and speaking this parable, speaking of a prophecy, okay, from the Most High. It says, I'm going to repeat, verse 16, it says, he hath said, which heard the words of Yahweh, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty. Falling into a trance, but having his eyes open, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Right? So there's that star of Jacob, okay? Referring to the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, okay? And the scepter shall rise out of Israel. Okay, that scepter, that power, the northern and southern kingdoms, okay, coming together as one, one nation, okay, the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes. Okay, so Numbers 24 and 17 continue on, saying, And shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Okay, verse 18, and Edom shall be a possession seer also shall be a possession for his enemies and israel shall do valiantly All right so israel shall do valiantly very valiantly shalakia and edom shall be a possession okay mount seer being uh the mountain in the land of edom okay so that symbol of of power okay seer okay the the governing body so on and so forth but the downfall of Eden, okay? Esau of Eden, so-called white man, okay? Numbers 24 and 19. Out of Jacob shall come he 
that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. All right, so going into Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, coming back, okay, to have dominion and rulership, righteous rulership over Moab, okay, the so-called Chinese, okay, and um, Edom, the so-called white man, okay, and this is just two specific nations, okay, that were mentioned, but before I go on in the same chapter, I'm going to go into another book in the Old Testament, okay, for those who strictly New Testament, strictly Old Testament, so on and so forth, okay, the prophecy, okay, of, and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, is, is all throughout the scriptures, all throughout the Holy Scriptures, New, Old Testament, okay, so on and so forth. You have the Apocrypha. But I'm going to read Isaiah 65 and start at verse 8, which reads, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, as the new wine is found in the cluster. Okay, so this new song, this new doctrine, okay, this faith, this truth, okay, and this um, new wine, okay, this new song that we're singing on one accord. Okay, it's found in the cluster, that cluster being the remnant, okay, the portion, the inheritance of the Lord, which is the remnant of Jacob, the hopeful elect. Okay? So I'm repeat it. it says, Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I, that I may not destroy them all. Right, and as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing, that we are not utterly destroyed, okay? Jacob is not utterly destroyed, okay? So the home, the hopeful elect, the remnant is of Jacob, okay? The 12 tribes of Israel. Here, Isaiah 65 and 9 says, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains. Right, and mountains symbolizing a governing body. Okay, so out of Jacob and out of Judah, which our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach sprang out of the line, the seed line, okay, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and came from the line of Judah, okay, descending from King David, okay, okay, so that was one of the, that was, uh, you know, the seed line, it, it, it came, our Lord comes from the tribe of Judah, okay, I'm going to continue on, it says, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. All right, so his, the Lord's elect, okay? The elect shall inherit the kingdom, okay? That righteous rulership along with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, okay? So our, his servants, okay, the hopeful elect, the remnant, shall dwell there, okay? Dwell in rulership, doing the will of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, under Yahweh Shai, and under King David. And continue on here back in the book of Numbers, chapter 24, and verse 20 it says, And when he looked on Amalek, okay, Amalek, okay, the so called, you know, Jews, um, and they're really just imposters, okay, the little hatters that are over there in the Holy Land now that occupy the nation of Israel, the physical land of Israel, okay, as we know it today, okay, those are Amalekites, okay. And Amalek being the, uh, I believe, the grandson of Esau. So they are Edomites, okay? So-called white men, okay? Esau of Edom, so-called white men. I'm going to repeat Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end, okay, as we approach his latter days, his latter end shall be that he perish forever, right? So... Okay, the Edomites after serving captivity in the kingdom to come, okay, serving a thousand years of captivity, okay, going into slavery, the re the, the resurrection, okay, of our, of our, of the kingdom, okay, the, the kingdom to come, and okay? the rebuilding of it here on earth, okay, they're going to serve that thousand years of captivity, and then the Lord's going to do away with them, okay, but I'm going to go into a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, Okay, so I can just give me one moment here. And I'm uh, going to go into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, and verse 17, which reads, Remember 
what Amalek did unto thee by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt. Right? So our forefathers, okay? The Israelites coming out of Egypt after the Lord, Yahweh, okay, smote the land of Egypt with plagues, okay? And the Pharaoh and the, and the wicked captors of our people, okay? This this is uh, this was thereafter, okay? So Deuteronomy twenty five and eighteen, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, so Amalek coming up against our people, slaying our people. Okay, as we escaped and fled Egypt, okay, through the blessings of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, this wicked devil was out there still pursuing our people and slaying our people. Okay, so verse 19 says, Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy power hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, thy power. Okay, the word God, Allah, going into power, says, giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. All right, so we shall not forget it, okay? Amalek has a hefty bill to pay. And in the latter days, okay, gonna be done, donezo, okay? They, they got... They got a very short time, as the scriptures say, the devil coming down with great wrath because you know he has but a short time. Okay, so Amalek's days are numbered. Okay, Amalekites, those little hatters. Okay, yeah, those little imposters. Okay, call themselves the so called, you know, they call themselves Jews. They, they, they call themselves Jewish. Okay, but those in this truth and, and with the through the Holy Spirit, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh we know them to be imposters and their days are numbered. So now I want to go back into the book of Numbers. Chapter 24. Let's go into verse 21. It says, And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted until a shore shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when Yahweh doth do with this? And how about Shemiel shall do with this, okay? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim and shall afflict Ashur, sure, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. Right? So, speaking of, you know, wars, okay? Wars to come. What's brewing now? World War Three, okay? You got the the military might of of what's what's known as modern day Russia, okay, in the scriptures, known as Magog, okay. I believe it's also shortened up as Gog, but Magog, okay. The Russians now gearing up for many many uh you know battles and whatnot. I mean, not only do they have a, a major arsenal of you know hypersonic nuclear missiles, so on and so forth, you know, and they move obviously moved around the world. But um, right now they're sending troops over into Kazakhstan, okay? And uh, they've, you know, they, they are hand in hand, you know, their allies, you know, in, in that area, in that region, okay? Whether it be China, um, you know, they have have a lot of different, you know, workings and dealings with a lot of different countries in that area, in particular adversaries of Babylon the Great, aka America, spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually Egypt, Okay, we know that China, um, also known as Moab, okay, known as Moab in the scriptures, okay, that was the, the name that was given to them, the biblical name of, for the people, okay, and they have also, you know, a, a resentment and a hatred for Babylon the Great, aka America, so, you know, they've tested hypersonic missiles, okay, North Korea reportedly just tested a hypersonic missile, okay, you got Iran, who is who is uh, very much upset with 
with the the U.S. and and uh, they are ready to duke it out with with the country, the nation of Israel as we know it. Okay, right now, the physical land thereof, I should say. Um, so there's a lot of tension, and the Lord is going to put the spirit on these on these uh, nations. You know, He's going to put it on their leadership, quote unquote, and the powers that be, and ultimately they are going to to make this place desolate they are going to launch thermonuclear destruction upon america okay and babylon the great but also they will afflict each other okay so world war three is brewing up and it is prophesied in the scriptures but now okay i'm going to turn the page now a little bit and uh i want to dive into the apocrypha go into second ezra's Chapter 2, 2nd Ezra's 2, we'll start at verse 24, which reads, Abide still, O my people, and take thy rest, for thy quietness shall come. All right, so we're going to have quietness, okay, but this is not our rest. This modern day captivity, okay, is not our rest. This land, okay, that we're in, this is our, we're, we are held captive here, okay? We were brought here. Okay, we are part of a, you know, all of our nations and people, the tribes of Israel, okay, the 12 tribes, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay, Haitians, West Indians, those scattered abroad, okay, at uh, one point or another, we were part of a, a slave trade, okay, different captivities, transatlantic slave trade, so on and so forth, okay, but I'm continuing on here now, okay, it says, verse 20, 2nd Ezra 2 and 25, Nourish thy children, O oh, thou good nurse, establish their feet. All right, so we have to have, you know, we have to be quickened, okay? Made alive in the spirit, okay? We have to establish our feet and, and be able to walk uprightly on the straight and narrow path to the straight gate, okay? Verse 26, as for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Right, and that number is 144,000, okay? Amongst the two thirds that will come back in the kingdom, Lord willing, can okay, be reborn, but they're gonna, you know, have to learn learn the law, statutes, and commandments and the ways of the Most High after death by pain, as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here into, um, so I'm gonna repeat actually, 2nd Ezra 2 and 26, okay? So at least a portion of it says, for I will acquire them among thy, from among thy number, okay? So the Lord is a portion, the Lord's inheritance, okay? The remnant of Jacob. And verse 27 says, be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. All right, okay, so that day of trouble, okay? And then... Um, the, the heaviness, you know, and, and this walking in this truth, okay, is very much, um, it's bearing our cross, as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing, okay? Others shall be weep, shall weep and be sorrowful, but for the hopeful elect, those that are praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and that, that are calling on the true names of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, repenting, seeking mercy and forgiveness, okay? Seeking to bring forth ripe fruit with faith, belief, and righteous works, rehearsing the righteous acts, okay? That's what, you know, we're going to be, you know, through uh, much tribulation shall we enter the kingdom of heaven, if we paraphrase in the scripture. Okay, so the Lord is going to bestow blessings, okay, and uh, provisions, okay. He's going to take care of his elect. Lord willing, we'll be of that number. Now, I'm going to flip over real quick and dive in. So that, that trouble, okay, that trouble. Well, let's go into trouble. And let's go into the book of Jeremiah. And so let me get my spot here. Chapter 30. Okay, let's go into Jeremiah 30. And let's go into verse 7. Which reads, Alas, for the day is great, so that none, okay, none, no day, no other day, is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, Jacob, 12 tribes. Okay, our forefather. Forefather, 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, but he shall be saved out of it. Okay, so 
12 tribes, the hopeful elect are going to be saved out of that trouble. Okay. So I'm going to go back into Jeremiah 30 and 8. It says, For it shall come to pass in, the, in that day, said the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Right? So no more serving themselves of Esau of Edom. Okay. And our yokes and bonds. Okay. In this modern day captivity, we will no longer be subject to the captivity of Esau of Edom, the so-called white man. Okay. So the Lord's children. Okay. That yoke from their neck will be, you know, the Lord is going to, is gonna you know bring us to closer to that that uh you know that everlasting immortality okay the hopeful elect he's gonna he's gonna free his truly you know be able to free his people per se you know the believers okay the hopeful elect okay so jeremiah 30 and 9 says but they shall serve the lord their power and david their king whom i will raise up unto them Right, so the tabernacle of David, okay? King David be risen up. Okay, so there's the order. You have Yahweh, the heavenly father, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Okay, King David, then the hopeful elect. Okay, the remnant of Jacob. So there's order to the kingdom, okay? To this righteous rulership, there is an order, okay? So just like it's there is in the ministry, okay? But I'm gonna continue on here. Jeremiah 30 and 10. It says, therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Once again, captivity, okay? So this is the land of our captivity. Babylon the Great, aka America, spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually Egypt. Okay? And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. All right. Verse 11, Jeremiah 30 and 11. For I am with thee, said the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. All right. So again, just like we read in Isaiah 65, okay? Not making a full end of our people, not utterly destroying our, uh, you know, our, not utterly destroying Jacob, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. Okay, but I will correct thee in measure. Right? So we will be corrected, okay? And we will be, we will be, you know, doing law, abiding by the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, when the Lord gives us that that spiritual upgrade in the celestial bodies, okay, and and uh, we're able to. Fulfill the will of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, in perfection. Lord will be of that number. It says, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Right? So there's a portion, okay? There's a portion, the remnant of Jacob. However, there are those that will be punished, that will have to learn the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, okay? After death by pain, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. Okay, so now I want to take it into the book of Zechariah. Let's go into Zechariah real quick. Let's go into Zechariah 8. I'm sorry, I was like it. Uh, let's go to Zechariah 13 and 8. So chapter 13, verse 8 reads, And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. All right, so two thirds of our people, okay, two thirds of the people and the children of Israel will be cut off and die, okay, because they've not come back to the Heavenly Father, okay. Many different types of adultery, spiritual adultery, okay, so on and so forth. They seek not the Heavenly Father, okay, for many different reasons. So, so in verse 9, Zechariah 13 and 9, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. Right? So that furnace of affliction, the furnace of adversity, 
being tried. Okay, the fiery trial, as the scriptures say, you know, being refined as silver. So when silver is refined, when you can see your own image in it, that is when you know it has been completely refined. Roughly paraphrasing what, what a, you know, what's been taught. But the point being is that we want to be made in the image of Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the only begotten Son who did not sin in the flesh. Okay? So I'm going to continue on here in Zechariah 13 and 9. Continue on in the verse. It says, They shall call on my name. Okay? The importance of the names. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Can't just call them whatever you want. Can't say that it doesn't matter. The names very much matter. Okay? It is a matter of life and death. Okay? So they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, is my power. Okay, the Lord is my God. The Lord is my power. Okay. So, in that day, you know, the Lord is going to know his own. Okay. So, now I want to jump back into the book of Second Ezra. Okay. Chapter 2. Gonna jump over to verse 27. Continue on here. It says, Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt marry in abundance. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, said the Lord. My hands shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. And so the children of Israel, okay, shall not see hell, also known as a grave, okay, pit, more or less just see death, okay, verse 30, be joyful, O thou mother, okay, the mother being Israel, okay, also, you know, described as a delicate and comely woman in the scriptures, okay, but the mother being Israel with thy children, okay, the 12 tribes, okay, so be joyful, O thou mother with thy children, for I will deliver thee Set the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? So being delivered, okay? Being delivered. Now I want to go into, you know, in that time of trouble, okay? The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, said the Lord. Okay? And that was Second Ezra 2 and 28. Now I want to hop over real quick to the book of Revelation. Book of Revelation, so like you my spot here, verse 2. So, Revelation uh, chapter 2, let's start at verse 10. And this is red letter Yahweh Shai Hamashiach speaking. Okay, and this is uh, Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. All right, so a crown of life, that everlasting immortality, okay? We want to be of that number, okay? If it means being a martyr, okay, whatever it means, okay? Be thou faithful unto death, all right? So, got to be able to put it all on the line, okay? Okay? Put it all on the line for your help, Hashem, your own shot. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death, right? So, you know, we don't want to be... We don't want to be around, okay, when, when them thermo nukes come in. You know, we don't want to be around for the famine, sword, and the pestilence. You know, anything that, um, you know, any anything that's in the in that ballpark. Nah, I'm good. I'm trying to, trying to, I'm trying to see salvation. You know, I'm trying to see salvation. I'm working. I'm trying to work my fear. You know, my salvation out with fear and trembling. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture. Okay. So now I want to hop over to the book of Luke, chapter 21. It kind of goes to the into that same, um, you know, kind of just to add on to that. Luke 21 and verse 12, once again, red letter, Yahweh Shai speaking. Okay. It says, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and, and persecute you 
delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Right? So for professing, okay, confessing the names of Yahweh Bashem Shai, okay, and being standing, you know, sternly, okay. And um, you, know, you know, holding steadfast, roughly paraphrasing in the scripture, okay? You know, holding on to the names of Yahweh Bashim Shai, okay? Not bowing down to the image of Baal, okay? Not bowing down to the image of the beast, okay? Not joining the crew of the juicy juice, okay? Everyone taking that juicy juice, you know, the karagma, okay? So on and so forth, man. Taking that Frito Lay chip, all right? That false miracle, so on and so forth, all the things that are coming, okay, in this hour of temptation. But I'm gonna continue on here. At uh, Luke 20, St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 13 it says, And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. All right, so settle it, okay, and know that the Lord, okay, will be with us. Yahweh Shimei Hal Shai will be with us okay verse 15 for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist right so we're gonna have to just trust in y'all okay that is plain as you know hey plain and simple trust in y'all pray to the heavenly father pray for the holy spirit okay and and if we're of that number, yeah, we're good, all right. No matter what happens, okay. If we, if we can die in the name of Yahweh Shem Shai for the name of Yahweh Shem Shai, hey, that's a that's a righteous death, all right. Lord willing, you know. If it's if man, you know, if that's what we gotta do, and and then make it into the you know make it into the kingdom, man. Make it and be given that election, okay, man. That'd be a beautiful thing. I'm going to continue on now. Go uh, back into the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 2. So, I'm going to hop back into 2nd Ezra 2 and verse 31. It's like, yeah. Going back into 31. Okay, so this one reads, Remember thy children that sleep, for I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth. And show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty. Right? So, the Akim, the Aqua, the believers, the hopeful elect coming from all corners of the world, across the four winds, okay? All sides of uh, the sides of the earth. Okay, verse 2nd Ezra 2 and 32. Embrace thy children until I come, and show mercy unto them, for my wells run over, and my grace shall not fail. Right? Shall not fail, okay? The word of the Lord will not return void, roughly paraphrasing the scripture, okay? Then if it is spoken by the Most High, through the prophets of the Most High, okay? They're moved by the Holy Spirit, okay? It is not going to come back void, okay? These words of the Heavenly Father, okay, they will come to pass. Verse 33, I, Ezra, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb, that I should go unto Israel. But then when I came unto them, they set me at naught, set me at nothing, and despised the commandment of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Right? So being that stiff necked, hard headed, you know, two third Jake. Okay? Being stubborn. Don't want to listen. Can't get right. Okay? They always know better. They always got to disprove and, and question everything as opposed to seeking edification, understanding, and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through the scriptures, okay? They're misusing the prophets, roughly paraphrasing the scriptures, okay? So on and so forth. But I'm going to continue on here. And uh, Second Ezra 2 and 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Okay, so those who have an ear to hear, okay? Those who have the, the ability there to digest this word, eat this roll. It's like it. And it says, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. Look for the shepherd, okay, of the flock. It says, uh, 
that was just, you know, I added that. It's not in scripture. Now, second Ezra 2 and 34 says, For he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. Right? The end of this time period. Okay? End of the world. Right? The end of this time period as we know it. So, that shepherd. Okay? So, who's that shepherd? Okay? Well, let's go into the book of John. St. John. So, like it. St. John, chapter 10. And let's start at verse 7. Then said Yahweh Shai unto them again. Okay? Verily, verily. Red letter. Verily, verily. I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Okay, the sheep being the flock. Okay, the believers. The 144 elect. Okay, the nation of Israel. Okay? It says, verse 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, but me, by me, so like that, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Right? So, okay. So, all that ever came before the Heavenly Father, okay? I mean, it's like, yeah, the only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, okay? The sheep are the believers, okay? We, we understand. We're able to through the Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we are able to, you know, separate the truth, man. Okay, so, and, and once we heard this doctrine, this this gospel, this, you know, being being sung on one accord, and, and hearing the elder apostles of Great Millstone, and those like-minded brothers who are teaching under the umbrella, okay, resonates with your spirit, resonates with you, and you know that this is the truth, Okay. And it's a blessing to be in this truth. I don't want Rathaza continue to be able to to um, obtain this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through prudent, diligent work, seeking edification daily, you know, studying to show thyself approved, so on and so forth, rehearsing, rehearsing righteous acts, okay, preaching the word, okay, every bit of it, and repenting for our sins, okay? So I'm going to continue on here. St. John chapter 10. And uh, verse 9, so just kind of to summarize in that, just, you know, if any man shall enter in, he shall be saved, okay? So coming into this truth, okay, shall go in and out and find pasture. So we shall find that everlasting life. We shall find that rest, okay? We should be fed. We should be, you know, in that safe haven, per se, okay? It's, it's a, you know, this is a fiery trial, no doubt. And we have to bear our burden, bear our cross. But this is very much, um, you know, what we, the promise, okay? The promise of that everlasting life and the kingdom, okay, to come. That is worth every bit of it. Because as the scriptures say, you know, uh, one day in the kingdom is as a thousand years. So, <laughs> I mean, you think about one lifetime. Okay, here in this flesh, on this earth, I mean, what? Say if you make it to a hundred years old. I mean, that's like a portion of a day in the kingdom. So, you know, that's very much worth it. But let's continue on here. As St. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Right? So the thief, okay, these false prophets, false doctrines, these philosophies and Christianity, Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, blah, blah, blah. You know, all these other, you know, Mormon, all this other creepy crap, crap, okay? It, it, it's not what it is, okay? This truth, this is where it's at, okay? The teachings of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, okay? Through the elder apostles, once again, of GMS, okay? Great Millstone, and for, for everyone, like-minded brothers who are pushing this truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, okay? This is the word, this is the life. Okay, just like Yahweh Shai said, roughly paraphrasing, I am the life. Okay, I'm going to continue on here. At St. John 10 and 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. All right, so that sacrifice, okay? He was willing to sacrifice. Give it all up, okay? It says, but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep, 
whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Right? So, okay, hirelings, 501c3 doctrines, so on and so forth. These other pork chop pastors, Bishop Baloney, you know, all these other false prophets, okay? Pope, I don't even know his damn name, but that dude's a freaking demon, all right? The Lord's going to judge him, so on and so forth, you know? All these other false leaders, okay? It's just folly, all right? Leading the flock astray, leading them to destruction, okay? Because two-thirds of our people are going to perish, just like I just read in Zechariah 13. So, you know, it's very unfortunate, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, that is the Lord's will, and this is the Lord's movie. This is what the Lord created them for, okay? This was their spirit. This is this is what it is, you know? So just be thankful that we are in this truth, this understanding, that we can hear this word, hear this truth, and, and, and hearken to it, Okay? So go back to St. John 10 and 15. Yeah, 10 and 15. Yeah. It says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Again, being that, making that sacrifice, okay? Being willing, being willing and able to put it all in the line. Okay? It says, verse 16, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Right. Okay, so in the end, it's, it's all one accord. Okay, under one shepherd. That is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Through the powers and, and uh, through the spirit of, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and through the will of the Heavenly Father. Verse 17, St. John, verse uh, 10 and 17. It's like a chapter 10, verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father, the heavenly father commanding the only begotten son to lay down the life, he laid down his life for the hopeful elect, okay, of Israel and, and for their sins, okay, of the nation of Israel, because he knows that he is going to take his life. He's gonna res he's gonna be resurrected, he's gonna come back and obtain that dominion, that righteous rulership. He's going to be at the right hand of the heavenly father, as he is right now. Okay? So that is that is our Savior. That's our Lord and Savior. Okay? So that is the shepherd. Okay? That is the shepherd that will bring everlasting life. So now I want to go back into the book of Second Ezra. So I can... Okay, and so now Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 35 reads, it says, Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you evermore. And so that everlasting light, okay, that this truth, man, the Lord's will, man, bring them that number, okay, everlasting life, immortality. Verse 36, flee the shadow of this world, receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly, All right, so flee the shadow of this world, man, darkness, all right? We have to be, Lord willing, man, we have to be uh, attempting to walk uprightly, man, be vessels of the Lord's light, okay? Let the light shine, you know? Be able to seek the Holy Spirit, man, and, and, and seek this word, seek this truth. Testify our Savior, Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, okay? That is our Savior, okay? He's salvation. He delivers the deliverer. Verse 37. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks unto him that hath called you to the heavenly kingdom. Right? Because many are called, but few are chosen. 
So be glad, be very, very extremely glad that we are understanding and, you know, understanding this word for its truth, all right, and, and, and hearkening to it, okay? That we fear the Lord, so on and so forth. That we've been, you know, it's a true blessing that we've been given, you know, elder apostles and teachers, you know, and, and those who have the 100% truth and who teach it in all sincerity, okay? This is very much a blessing. As the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing that the Lord in the latter days, you know, will pour out a spirit, okay? And also that in the land of their captivity, will they remember themselves, right? So we're coming back to our heritage, which was long hidden from us, okay? By, you guessed it, Esau of Edom, the so-called white man, and all these other false teachings of all the wicked nations, okay? That look to oppress and afflict our people, okay? Let's go back in the second Ezra 2 and 38. Arise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Right? So we have received glorious garments, okay? And we're fleeing from the shadow of this world, right? The darkness thereof, the wickedness, the temptations, okay? seeking this word seeking to uphold ourselves walk uprightly okay seeking this uh this new raiment okay this and these garments you know seeking to put that on our put that on our spirits you know let the lord know that that we repent and that we are seeking forgiveness and mercy and that we want to do righteous works you know or at least you know rehearse the righteous acts and bring forth ripe fruit Okay, then we're looking to to you know be of that election. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue on here real quick at Second Ezra two and forty. Yeah, two and forty. It's not here. It says, uh, "Take thy number, O Sion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white." So white meaning pure, going into pure. Okay, so that raiment. Okay, that glorious garment. Okay, it says. Take thy number, O Sion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord, Yahweh verse 41. The numbers of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Beseech, and beg, beseech the power of the Lord, that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. All right, so we may be hollowed, called from the beginning, okay? The number of thy children, okay? What's was that number, 144. Hopeful elect, 12,000 from each tribe, okay? 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? Whew. That thy people which have been called from the beginning, okay? Called from the beginning. Now, let's go into the book of... Ephesians, and let's go into the book of Ephesians. So let me get my spot here, and let's go to chapter one, Ephesians one, and let's start at verse three, which reads, "I'll slap you." Uh, Kill me later. <laughs> slap you. All right, cool. So Ephesians one and three reads. Blessed be the power and Father of our Lord, Yahushai HaMashiach, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in HaMashiach, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, all right, so we should be separate, man, holy, man, that we should be chosen before the foundation of the world, okay? And what's love, right? Fear the Lord, abiding by the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? So Ephesians 1 and 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, 
wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. All right, so being accepted in the beloved, okay? Being accepted by the heavenly father. We are children, okay? By Yahushua Mashiach himself, that adoption, okay? So we have been, you know, Lord willing, be of that number, chosen from the foundation of the world, predestinated, okay? Predestinated. So it is your destiny. If you are believing in this truth, okay? Hearkening to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, praying, repenting, okay? Doing the work. I don't want to wrap the Zah. You'll be of that number, okay? Receive that election, that salvation, okay? Be living in that marvelous light, everlasting immortality, all right? Lord willing, be of that number. All right, so now I want to go back into Second Ezra, get back into chapter two. And go over to verse 42. Okay, so it says, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Sion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And praying, praising the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh okay, with psalms. It says songs, but also psalms, right? So, uh, verse 43, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, stature, Salakia. There was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. And right? so those crowns of life, okay? Onto the, you know, bestowing crowns onto the hopeful elect, onto the elect, okay? Verse 44, so I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? Verse 45, he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the, um, Salakia, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Okay, now are they crowned and received palms and receive palms right so we are crowned okay the crowns of life okay receive palms okay palms symbolizing victory okay so palms received okay that symbolizes victory okay so let's go into uh, same book but different chapter second ezra 2 let's go on to 7 and go down to verse 43 which reads, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time, okay, the end of this world, and the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past, intemperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. All right, so all of these, okay, describe the world quote unquote this time that we're living in now okay whether well, it's or at least you know where intemperance is at and corruption okay intemperance infidelity okay these things are are very much abroad in the world this you know this earth as we know it however okay when immortality will come okay corruption will be passed righteousness will be grown truth sprung up okay those are things to look forward to Okay, in the kingdom to come. Okay, when the Hawashai Hamashiach cracks those clouds with the holy angels. Okay, in the chariots of the Lord, so-called UFOs, the vessels, the vehicles of the Most High. Okay, that is going to be a, gr a terrible and a glorious day. A great and terrible day, as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, it's great for the hopeful elect and the believers and those who have been praying for the salvation. Okay, seeking, uh, you know, seeking that salvation, the election and 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 terrible for those two thirds and all these other heathen, okay, the wicked nations, Esau of Edom, so so called white man, so on and so forth, okay. I'm gonna finish here at Second Ezra seven and forty five, and it says, "Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory." Right, so no man can save, okay, because. 
It's up to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, the Heavenly Father, okay? And they are going to do righteous judgment, okay? Whoever they deem is worthy of election, okay, then so be it. But those that are, are going to be worthy of death, so be it, okay? So none can save from the, the, the hands of the Heavenly Father, okay? You might have it, your mommy, your pappy, okay? Your children, whatever it is, okay? If the Lord sees that they, they need to be reborn in the kingdom, or if they need to go out, okay? That's just the way it is, okay? So, 2nd Ezra 7 and 45, okay? Nor, uh, the end of that verse says, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory, right? So, no longer oppressed, no longer afflicted, okay? That palm, okay? Going back to... Second Ezra 2 and 45, okay? Crown, now are they crowned and receive palms, right? So palms symbolizing victory, okay? So they will no longer be oppressed, them that got the victory, right? Okay, so victory, well, let's go a little further into that. Okay, victory over what, right? So let's go into the book of Revelation. And let's go into chapter 15. So I can make it my spot here. And let's start off at verse 1. Let's start from the top. Okay. So let's go into this. And Revelation 15 and 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Verse two, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Okay. And over his, Im uh, Salakia, I'm going to repeat that. Says, and them that had gotten over the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Right, so seeing this, okay, through a chariot, okay, getting beamed up, getting that salvation, that election, right? Seeing the plagues that are upon the earth, okay, seeing this lake of fire. Okay, Babylon the Great being made desolate. Okay, thermonuclear destruction. All right, that lake of fire. All right, and they're watching this. Okay, it's like a sea of glass. Okay, as it was described in this vision. Okay, and and the whole elect will be watching it. Okay, from a chariot, from afar, from from Satan. You know, within the yeah, they're gonna be watching that and seeing and seeing this. Okay. So, because they had gotten the victory over the beast, okay, the image, the mark, the number of his name, not bowing down to this beast system, okay, of the so-called white man, okay, NATO, and all these other wicked nations that are in bed with Babylon the Great, aka America, spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually Egypt, all right? So, now I want to go into... Strong's here. Okay, let's go into Strong's. So the harps, uh, verse, the end of uh, Revelation 15 and 2 says, um, says, stand on the sea of glass. Okay, so the hopeful elect, right? Those those who had overcome, you know, gotten the victory, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, right? So let's go into the word here in the definition. Uh, looks like it's Greek definition here for harps. Strong's G, 2788, Kethara, Kethara. Kethara, okay, so harps. Okay, so Strong's goes into a lyre, so a musical instrument, right, a harp, okay, of uncertain affinity, okay, of uncertain affinity, right? So the Google definition of affinity, okay? So it can be a spontaneous or natural liking of sympathy for someone or something. Also a similarity of characteristics suggesting a relationship. 
especially a resemblance. Okay, so it's characteristics suggesting a relationship, right? So the harps of the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So a, resem a resemblance characteristics of the Most High. So being refined in the image of our Maker, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, so having those celestial bodies, the spiritual powers, all right? Being reborn, be, being given that blessing of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, okay? That means having the harps of the Most High. So having those spiritual bodies, the celestial bodies, man, upgrades, all right? I'm going to continue on here, Revelation 15 and 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant. Oh, Salakia. Yeah, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and the song of the Lamb. Okay, so the song of the Lamb being Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay, the Lamb. Saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Almighty. Okay, great and marvelous are thy works. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Thou King of the hopeful elect. Okay, the saints. All those who are preaching in this, this word and who have done so, okay, our forefathers, so on and so forth. Revelation 15 and 4. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, Yahweh Shai, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Right, so the judgments of the Most High made manifest, okay? Everyone in that time and day will know that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is Almighty Power, the Almighty Creator, that His will will be done, okay? Okay, so now I want to jump over real quick. So, singing, okay, so verse 3 says, Revelation 15 and 3, going into singing that song, okay? Singing that song of Moses the Lord, or our, the servant singing the song of the Lamb. Well, let's go into the book of Psalms really quick. Let's go into the book of Psalms, chapter 67 and verse 4. Psalm 67 and 4. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou, okay, now so speaking to the Heavenly Father, how about Shemuel Shai, okay, for thou shalt judge the people righteously. And govern the nations upon earth. And so that governing body, okay? So it's going to be the will of the Heavenly Father, but Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, okay? With King David, okay? The order, Yahweh, Bashem, yeah, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, King David, the governing body, okay? But Yahweh Shai, okay? The only begotten Son, okay, is our Savior, okay? He is salvation, He delivers. Okay, he is going to be that righteous judge. Okay, doing the will of his father, sitting at the right hand of Yahweh. Okay, our Lord, our creator, the almighty power. Okay, Allah Shadia. So now I'm going to go back and um, to finish off 2nd Ezra 2. Let's go into verse 46. Then said I, okay, Ezra said, Unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them? Okay, so receiving the crowns and the palms, those crowns of life, okay? And the palms of victory. So what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of Yahweh Bashem. It is the son of Yahweh, the son of power, the son of God. Okay, the son of God whom they have confessed in the world. Confessed the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. Confessed Yahweh Shai as our Lord and Savior. Okay? Confessed him in the world. Conf I repeat that. It says, so he answered, 2nd Ezra 2 and 47. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, the Son of Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So being commended for them that stood stiffly and being unmovable, right? Holding steadfast, holding strong for the names of Yahweh Shai. That's what we're willing to do, all right? 
we want to do it until death. So that's what we, Woo! I don't want to wrap this up. If you have that number. Finish off here at verse 48. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy power, Yahubashim Yahushai, thou hast seen. So preach this word. Preach this truth. Preach this doctrine. Preach the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Be fishers of men, as the scriptures say. All right? We have an obligation and, and an honor. And this is a true pleasure. Okay? It's a blessing. It's a gift to be able to digest and, and, and this seek this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay? This ministry is a blessing. Okay? So on and so forth. All right? So, you know, just continue to seek salvation, seek repentance. Okay? But most of all, seek Yahweh Shemiah Shai. Fear the Lord. Okay? And call on the names of Yahweh Bashimel Shai. Because through the only begotten Son, okay, we'll, that is our Savior. That is our Lord and Savior, all right? So there's no there's, there's no doing without Yahweh Bashimel Shai, okay? There's no just going straight to the, the, the Father, man. No, no how, no way, all right? So I don't want to wrap this up. This went a little longer than I expected, but Lord willing is edifying and comforting to the hopeful elect of Israel. All right, to Yaakim, the Aqua, all right, the believers. So I'll close this lesson out by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. Once again, I want to give double honor to the head apostles, elders, bishops, teachers of great millstone who rule well, teach well across the four winds with sound doctrine to the brothers out there who are out there pushing this word and truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Right, Shalom. Peace be unto you and your households. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect of Israel. Shalom. DTA. Barbara Ball. Soon. Real soon. Shalom.